What's going on, guys? And welcome to episode four of phase two of the Spin Wheel Park. And yeah, as you can see, we've added in a bunch more creatures. The last one we added in was Segisaurus. So the Segisaurus should be able to coexist with the herbivores with no problem. Look, they're already coexisting. That's a cool shot, actually. I'm going to take a screenshot of that real quick. There we go. All right, cool, cool, cool. So... I think we also added in Nothosaurus and uh, wherever that is. There it is, Nothosaurus and a few pterosaurs. And yeah, as you can tell, we're going to add a couple more creatures in. We only have 20 more to go, and then we'll move on to phase three with the last 22 species. So whatever the last 22 species are. Oh! We just caught action. Oh, okay. Chronosaurus in action. All right. Let's, uh,. Let's move on to creature number one. All right, creature number one is Wild Pluridon. All right, we're starting with a, an aquatic right off the bat. So where should we put this guy? Maybe over here. We got space over here. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll we'll add the Lyle Pluridon in here. There we go. That's gonna look a little odd, but whatever. All right, we got that. Let's get some viewing domes. We'll get some viewing domes. We'll get one for this side. And then one for the other side. That should be good. And now the Lagoon Hatchery. I think we last used it with the Nothosaurus. Yes, we did. All right. Let's move that over. And then let's get some marine fish feeders. And we should be good to go. Wait, hold on. It is enclosures, right? Yeah, enclosures. All right. Marine fish feeder. Because that's what they eat. All right. So we need Lyle Pluridon. All right. So, Lyle Pluridon should be in here. Yeah, there we go. All right, they do come in fives, but we'll only release three. Simply because, whatever. All right, we got the ocean. Just these three. All right, those will take a little bit. So, in the meantime, let's move on to creature number two. All right, creature number two is Chunkingosaurus, huh? All right. So, am I... I mean, we already got Kentrosaurus in here, and I don't think Chunkingosaurus will get on with that. That's the only problem. I mean, we've got creatures that won't get on with anything. Let's release Lyle Pluridon first. That's a cool colored one. The one in the front. Staring at us. Oh, it just opened its eyes. Wait, there's a setting where you can turn off territories. Actually, let me check that out. If that's a thing. Unlimited traits. Initiate fights. Combat frequency. Which is it? Cohabitation. No dislike. All like means all territories can completely share space with all other territories. And no dislike means that, no, that territories that would normally be contentious become neutral. Oh, yeah. There's that. So now we can pretty much add whatever the hell we want. All right, cool. You know what? That's convenient. Yeah, just just so we could save space, you know? Like, I honestly didn't know that setting was a thing until last episode when I was playing around with it. So now that I've changed the settings, we shouldn't have competition. Everything's neutral now. All right. Let's put Chunkingosaurus in. I also do have combat turned off, so we should be good to go. Alright, that's creature number two. Let's move on to creature number three. Alright, creature number three. What will it be? Utah Raptor. Alright, cool, cool. Alright, so for Utah Raptor, we do need to put them in a separate enclosure. So what we could do is put Utah Raptor in here. So we'll have a path going through here, where the patch of trees are. This was initially the Ceratosaurus enclosure. We'll throw the Utah Raptors in here. Yeah, that's what we'll do. So Utah Raptor can go in here. We won't make it too big. Just big enough where the Utah Raptor can roam around. You know, I kind of like that forest in the middle. 
I kind of like that. What we might do is make a patch of water here. Then make a carnivore feeder over here. And then maybe some goat feeders over here. That's what we'll do. And then we'll just throw in a viewing gallery like over here. And then so you can see them from the back, we could throw in a viewing dome in the back. And that way you can see the ceratosaurs as well, if you wanted to. All right, Utah Raptor we'll throw in here. All right, we'll throw Utah Raptor in here. All right, Utah Raptor should be all the way at the bottom. Yep, there you are. All right, there we go, Utah Raptor. We're getting that in. Cooking Utah Raptor up. Let's throw that in. All four of them. All four of them are going in here. We're getting a whole pack of Utah Raptors. Actually, we should decorate this with shrubbery. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll decorate this area. All right, let's throw it in. Utah Raptor. Let's go. All right. So Utah Raptor has been added in. Let's move on to creature number four. Creature number four is Thanatos Draken. I was wondering when we were going to get that. We can just add them in the big enclosure right here. So Thanatos Draken, and we'll add all three in. We already got Quetzal, so we shouldn't have to worry about Quetzal. There we go. So now I think Thanatos Draken will take a little bit longer because it's a lot bigger. Well, not a lot bigger in this game. It's actually a lot smaller. When in real life, it actually rivaled Quetzalcoatlus in size. Yeah, 35 seconds. That'll take a little bit longer. All right, let's move on to creature number five. All right, creature number five is... Ooh, Spinoceratops. Okay. All right, so for Spinoceratops, we could throw them in here. Since we already have, like, uh, we'll throw these guys in here. We already have Triceratops and Stegoceratops, so it wouldn't make too much sense to throw them in with the with them. All right, let's release the Thanatos Draken. These guys look so much bigger when they come out of the hatchery. But they're significantly smaller than the Quetzal. I really don't understand that at all. I hope they add more pterosaurs in in Jurassic World Evolution 3. And they just fix the sizes of these guys. I hope. I really do hope. Alright. Got the hatchery all taken care of. Let's get Spinoceratops ready to go. Which means the only hybrids we haven't used yet are Scorpius Rex, Indominus Rex, and Spinoraptor. We had Indoraptor, we had Ankylodicus, we had Stegoceratops, and now we have Spinoceratops. All right, all three of them. We have an Angel Skin and a Lux. There we go. So 26 seconds. Let's move on to creature number six. All right, creature number six. What will it be? Euoplocephalus. All right, cool, cool. You know what? We'll add it in with the, the Dreadnoughtus and the Triceratops. That's what we'll do. All right. Let's wait for Spinoceratops to release, and then we'll do just that. All right, let's release Spinoceratops. There's the Lux. So I think Angel might be in the back. Yeah, there's Angel. Alright, so that's Spinoceratops done. Let's get this hatchery out of here. There we go. So Euoplocephalus might be one of the quicker ones. I think you do like Tall Nut. I didn't even look. Fruit and Leaf. Alright, you should be fine. Alright, let's hatch those three up. They'll take 16 seconds. All right, you know what? Let's move on to creature number seven while we wait. All right, creature number seven is Ankylosaurus. Okay, you know what? We'll add them in here too. So let's get Ankylosaurus. We'll get Ankylosaurus at least going, and then we'll release Euoplocephalus afterwards. I just turned territories off, 
So we shouldn't have any um, territorial disputes against some of the herbivores. All right, Ankylosaurus is being thrown in. Let's release you, Aplocephalus. Just filling up the enclosures is all I'm doing. Alright, let's hatch up these. We got... We don't have any movie skins, which is cool, I guess. Alright, while we wait for Ankylosaurus, let's move on to creature number 8. Alright, creature number 8 is... Another Ankylosaur, Notosaurus. You know what, since Notosaurus is much smaller, in a way, we'll add them in with the, the small herbivores. Like the Minmi and the Nigersaurus and everything else. Alright, let's release the Ankylosaurus. Ankylosaurus has been done. What what kind of food do you guys like? Ground fruit, ground leaf. Alright, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll be fine in there. Alright, let's get this out of here. And put it in the smaller enclosure if we can. Wait, there's a spot. There we go. We got it. We got it at the end. Alright, let's put Notosaurus in here. Another Ankylosaur. Alright. Notosaurus is right here. These guys come in threes as well, I do believe. A lot of the Ankylosaurs tend to come in threes. I think Ankylosaurus comes in threes, Euopocephalus comes in threes, Notosaurus comes in threes, Sauropelta comes in threes, I do believe. I think Polacanthus also comes in threes. I'm not sure about that. I know Minmi comes in eights for whatever reason. All right, we got them. Notosaurus will take relatively quick. We'll just throw that in. All right, let's throw in Notosaurus. So that's Notosaurus done. Let's move on to creature number nine. Creature number nine is... Archelon. Okay, all right. You know what we'll do? We'll just throw them in with the Nothosaurs. That's what we'll do. So, let's see. Um, We used it last for the Lyopleurodons, of course. All right, so let's move this over. Because Archelon is the only other aquatic creature... That can go on these platform things. I still don't understand this biome penalty thing. If anyone can let me know what that is, then I'll be eternally grateful. I would appreciate it very much. Because I really don't know what that biome penalty means. Does that mean the rating goes down because they're in the wrong biome? Because that's the only thing I can think of. All right, we'll throw in Archelon in here. We got a Nothosaurus kind of just swimming around. All right, let's release the Archelons. One of the most unique creatures in the game. I was very shocked that this was added in. I'm, I really was shocked about that. This is beautiful. Like, Jurassic World Evolution, especially the second game, it's a very beautiful game. The first game had the animations kind of feel stiff. Like, the dinosaurs in the first game, they felt stiff because they were just doing the same animations over and over again. But these... These feel more natural, in my opinion. They really do. Yeah, that's, that's my opinion, though. Hopefully Jurassic World Evolution 3 can take it a step further. 
All right, let's move on to creature number 10. All right, and our final creature for the episode is... Tylosaurus. It just landed on Tylosaurus. All right. So for Tylosaurus, we could throw them in here, I guess. All right, we did it. All right, so let's add in... Let's throw Tylosaurus in right now. So we'll get Tylosaurus. There we go. All right, we got that going. All right, let's release the Tylosaurus. Let's go. We'll release all three of them. All right, we'll have to see how this goes, and we'll be good to go. Tylosaurus is being hatched up. So this is our this is our park so far. We still got plenty of space for creatures and whatever if we need space, and yeah, we'll be good to go. Remember on my main channel a while back, I made a series called Jurassic World The New Sanctuary? I kind of want to do something similar to that. You'd have to let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do, like, a, a reboot of that. Alright. So that's all of the species added in. So far. We only got one more species, or one more episode left, where we add ten more species. And then for phase three, we'll add in the last twenty-two. So whatever doesn't make it into Phase 2 will be in Phase 3. But until then, that's going to have to wrap it up for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. It would really help out a ton. But until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.